Tex Wilson. I'm here at Cross Fork, Pennsylvania, which is located in Potter County, along Kettle Creek, near the Clinton County line. Before going to Allegheny State Park to resume a personal quest to photograph a live timber rattlesnake, the opportunity to attend an annual snake hunt here at Cross Fork presented itself. This will be an outstanding opportunity to see some live timber rattlesnakes up close in a controlled environment and also to become more acquainted with the species. Meet Crotalus hordus also known as the timber rattlesnake. Notice the flickering of its tongue, that is how they smell. Its domain covers most of the eastern half of the continental United States, starting midway through Texas and Oklahoma, and extending as far northeast as New Jersey. Listen to this guy rattle. In both New York and Pennsylvania, these snakes are protected. Although the species as a whole is in no danger of being extinct, their numbers are in rapid decline in both states where it's also illegal to kill them. In Pennsylvania, a license is required to hunt them, but the hunting doesn't actually involve any killing. These snakes will all be released back into the wild unharmed in the general areas where they are caught after the annual snake hunt is over. Only adults over 42 inches long are allowed to be captured. All smaller rattlesnakes must be left alone. Most of the rattlesnakes that will appear in this video are males. The females generally don't get as big. The males can grow as long as 6 feet in length. Only the eastern diamondback, which is found in Florida and Georgia, if can grow up to 8 feet in length, is decisively bigger. The timber rattlesnake quite possibly has the longest fangs of all rattlesnakes. They are like hypodermic needles that deliver their venom deeper into the muscle tissue of its prey. The venom breaks down blood cells and muscle fiber. The digesting process of its prey is actually started from the inside out. This guy is lucky that the snake's fangs didn't penetrate his boot. It doesn't appear that he's wearing snake-proof chaps. Notice the coloration of these two rattlesnakes. One is darker than the other. Despite the difference in skin pigmentation, they're still the same species, and like the human race. The snake in the top picture is a lighter shade known as the yellow phase, while the one in the lower part of the picture is a darker shade known as the black phase. Birth, the coloration of the juvenile rattlesnakes adapts to blend in with the type of natural habitat that they are born into. Once the snake adapts, it will bear that same coloration for the rest of its life. This natural camouflage is vital to survival. They prefer to be in heavily wooded areas. Besides mankind, they have other natural predators to avoid, like eagles and other snakes. If their bodily camouflage fails to blend in with their natural habitat, they usually will not live to see adulthood. These rattlesnakes have a lifespan of roughly 20 to 30 years if left alone in the wild. Rattlesnakes, cottonmouths, and copperheads are all indigenous to North America. These snakes all pit vipers. They have heat sensing pits located right here which allow them to see heat signatures. What they see is comparable to what we would see using infrared. Their actual eyesight is fairly poor. In general, they usually can't see above the average person's knee. If you look closely at the still photograph, you'll notice the heat sensing pit located in between the snake's eye and nostril, but slightly lower. This guy is coiled up and ready to strike. Although it isn't rattling, it still means business. Remember that a rattlesnake has a strike radius of roughly two-thirds of its body length. In short, a three-foot-long snake can strike as far as two feet away. They can strike and be fully recoiled for another strike in less than a second. A timber rattlesnake will only strike if it feels threatened. As long as you don't provoke it or get too close, there is no reason to fear it. It will not approach to attack you. They generally just want to be left alone and will try to avoid all hostile confrontations. The adults generally don't want to waste any energy or venom on something that they cannot eat. Roughly one out of every three or four bites is a dry bite without any venom actually being injected. This is just an effort to scare off whatever is threatening them. That isn't good enough odds to make me feel any safer about handling one. The adults can also control the amount of the dosage that they administer. 
Juveniles, on the other hand, are young and inexperienced. They're more likely to empty their entire venom supply out of fear. Any snake bite is serious cause for concern, especially if bitten by a juvenile. A common characteristic of venomous snakes in North America is the triangle-shaped head. What appears to be cheeks is actually the venom glands on the side of the head, creating the triangle shape. One exception to this generalization is the coral snake, which has a small head and looks harmless. Make no mistake about it, they are extremely lethal. Another common characteristic of venomous snakes is that they usually have reptilian slits for pupils in their eyes, whereas non-venomous snakes usually have brown pupils like we do. If you were close enough to one to actually see that in the wild, you're probably in a lot of trouble. Yellow timber, yellow. A closer look at the triangle-shaped head of a rattlesnake can be seen in this still photograph. It's time for a confession. I really don't like snakes, but for some reason rattlesnakes have always been fascinating. 10 or 15 years ago, if I would have encountered one in the wild, I probably would have been killed out of ignorance and fear. With age, I've grown to understand and respect their place in the ecosystem. Contrary to common belief, rattlesnakes don't like a lot of direct exposure to the sun. It can punish them just as badly as it can punish us. Several of the snakes have gravitated to this corner of the snake pit where it's shaded and cooler to avoid the hot sun beating down on the other end of the pit. Notice the device in the hand of the snake handler. It's used to scan each snake that is brought in for a microchip. The chip is embedded before a snake is released back into the wild. This allows the handlers to determine whether or not it has been caught before and roughly where it came from. One thing that amazes me is how calm and non-aggressive these snakes are despite all the heavy human activity surrounding them. In addition to being microchipped, each snake will also be measured. This information will be supplied to the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission. As you can see, some of these snakes are shedding or molting. The older they get, the less often they will shed because they are growing much more slowly or no longer growing at all. A clear indication that a snake is about to shed is when its eyes become cloudy or opaque. Each time a snake sheds, it gets another rattle. This snake has 11 rattles. Another popular misconception is that their age can be determined by the number of rattles. This is not true since the juveniles are growing and shedding at a faster rate than the adults and because the rattles often break off. Rattles are similar in composition to our fingernails. Here's a closer look at a rattle. I don't know if it's true or just a myth, but I learned from the show Venom Hunters that if a rattlesnake goes in water, the rattle could become waterlogged and won't make any noise until it dries out. There are other species of snakes that were also caught in the snake hunt and brought into the snake pit for display. A pair of northern copperheads and an extremely big garter snake are the other guests of honor. The garter snake could be seen working its way into the picture from the left. Non-venomous snakes will also be available for public handling later in the day. On day one of the event, 13 total timber rattlesnakes were brought in. The largest was 55 inches. All of these specimens have been extremely impressive to watch. I suddenly seem to have lost my fear of them and have gained a new respect for what I didn't know. Before being released back into the wild, these snakes will probably be milked for their venom. It is bright fluorescent yellow in color. The pharmaceutical industry pays top dollar for this valuable resource. Part of it is used to create anti-venom, but it's also used to develop blood pressure medication. It has blood thinning and anticoagulant properties. When handling the snakes for purposes other than milking, a tube is placed over the head of the snake to prevent the handlers from getting bit. I was hoping that this would also be for the purpose of allowing somebody inexperienced to handle one long enough for a quick photograph. No such luck here today. This is a ringtail bow. This is about facing a personal fear. It's proof that it is possible to respect and admire something that is also very hated and feared. <laughs> I wasn't able to get some of the close-up video footage and pictures that were hoped for, but the trip has been more than worthwhile. 
Most of these film clips and segments had to be filmed from over the snake pit wall and from the other side of the pit. The surrounding wire screen engulfing the entire outer perimeter made the job really challenging. There was also a roped off barrier to keep spectators about four feet from the actual walls of the pit. Female rattlesnakes usually aren't fertile until they are roughly 11 years old. They typically give birth from anywhere between four to eight live juveniles. They don't produce offspring every year. That is more like every three to five years. A female may only reproduce two or three times in her entire lifetime. This is partially why the species is so slow to repopulate. The other problem is mankind. There is roughly 36 known species of rattlesnake in the world, all of which are found in the Western Hemisphere, and mostly in Mexico and the continental United States. They can't be domesticated and don't make good pets. The cruelest thing that mankind can do is to take them out of their natural habitat. They are wild creatures that are meant to remain wild. I've lived in western New York for pretty much my entire lifetime. It's only recently that I've become aware of how close these magnificent creatures really are to home. If you encounter one of them in the wild, treat it with respect and leave it alone. If one is a nuisance around your home, Call your local game warden or somebody from your local conservation department and have it safely removed to a new location. This video will close with some additional photographs from the annual snake hunt in Cross Fork. This video is actually the second video in what will be a mini-series that documents a personal quest to photograph a live timber rattlesnake in the wild near the western New York and Pennsylvania state borderline. At Rock City Park, we began to become more acquainted with the species, but more so with the type of natural habitat that it thrives in. Here in Cross Fork, we have become much more acquainted with the species itself. Now it's time to make the trek out to Allegheny State Park to resume that personal quest. I'm Mark Tex Wilson. Thanks for watching.